now one more small topic which i would like to cover is um, sometime the state machines could be incompletely specified so um, you uh, this is an independent topic it's not related to reduction but it's like uh, whenever we try to design a state machine so for example in the previous lecture we were trying to design a state machines so whenever there were any state we were saying let us complete the state machine so when we were saying let us complete the state machine it meant that uh, for all possible inputs let us see what would be the transitions next state transitions for all possible inputs so um now you uh, so all so uh, this also means that let's say uh, right now in all our examples number of inputs were only one so and uh, this particular input all only had two values 0 and 1 so if instead of one value there uh, there would be two values then we have to find all the transitions for all four possibilities of inputs so let's say two inputs are a and b if ab is 0 0 then what would be the transition if ab is 0 1 then what would be the transition if ab is 1 0 then what would be the transition so or all pos all four possibilities we have to have all the transitions known for all possibilities that's how a state machine would be complete now when we were studying combinational circuit then also uh, there were some incompletely specified functions and when a function was incompletely specified we were saying a function is incompletely specified when certain input combinations are not possible because those input combinations are not possible so we don't know what is going to be the output corresponding to that in a very similar case in a very similar way a state machine would be incompletely specified when a particular possible of possibility of inputs is not there so let's consider the example first example we have taken in um, in our um, case today so let us say the it is known that input is always going to be a bcd number if input is a bcd number then uh, the the possibilities of input for four disjoint bits could be only from 0000 to 1001 any number which is more than 10 is not possible so because those numbers are not possible that will make those transitions as incompletely specified okay so this incompletely specified uh, state machines is is a very interesting case because um, in the state machine it looks like that those those arrows are missing and this become even more interesting that uh, when we are going to uh, reduce the state machines so in case of reduction of uh, state machines if the if if it is incompletely specified then sometime we can optimize the way we were optimizing in k maps in k maps if something was incompletely specified or there were don't care conditions then we were at our will we were trying to say that whether uh, if they are helping us in reduction of a state machine then we'll optimize then we can combine with any other state so similarly those kind of things are possible here also but we are not um, going in detail of those examples and um, um, but yes that's the overall idea there is also one more possibility that a state machine could be incompletely specified when a output is not there for a certain state so let's say it's a it's a uh, it could be mille machine as well as moore machine so in case of a mille machine let's say for for particular state transition from a to b the output cannot be specified so uh, there is no output so that means um, output is don't care we don't know what the output is because nobody is going to read that output so output is not specified and then also your state machine will become incompletely specified so uh, these incompletely specified uh, incompletely specified state machines could have a, again the opportunity for optimizations and state reductions and uh, optimization of boolean logic also yeah so that's always presents us like an opportunity 
so let's overall summarize our uh, finite state machine design problem so when we have a problem in our hand we would like to uh, let's say do a pattern detection or any other state machine we would like to design so the step for all of those things would be the first step is that we will design a state diagram sometime we can directly write a state table so after finishing the state diagram then we have to design uh, we have to write the state table after finishing the state table now we be, uh, towards the implementation we have to uh, the second step would be we have to encode the state so because so far all the states were be were, were given some alpha numeric numbers s1 s2 s3 or a b c d now those uh, states has to be encoded into binary numbers when the states has been encoded to binary numbers then the state table will also become a transition table because there in the transition table essentially all the states are replaced by their encoded values so once we have this transition table with us then for each flip flop for each um, for each uh, memory element we would find what is the next state equation so this we have done in our uh, first and as well as the second lecture of our uh, our finite state machine module so um, then after finding the next state for each uh, each of the flip flop then so you see then this next state and uh, this state is different because now we are finding the next state for each flip flop so um, and after finding the uh, next next state for each of the flip flop then um, we would find the boolean expression for each of the output so let's uh, quickly see with an example um, so in this lecture itself we have seen that um, we have taken an example where we were trying to optimize um, trying to find out the state table finite state machine for for uh, for matching the pattern 1001 and 1010 then we came up with this this optimized uh, or reduced state table so in this reduced state table we have to first of all uniquely identify how many states are there we see a b c d e and uh, h and l so these are the seven states which are uniquely there so uh, for seven states we would require at least three bits to represent now we have to assign that which three bits to be given to each of the state so let's say we simply follow the number that this a is given 0 then 1 then 2 then 3 4 5 and 6 so these boolean numbers are given now these these numbers need to be replaced in uh, the state table so that we have a transition table with us so in transition table because we require three bits to store these states so we would require three flip flops uh, let's say flop 1 flop 2 and flop 3 so this flop 1 flop 2 flop 3 represents the present state value and f1 plus f2 plus and f3 plus represent the next state value so um, and then we replace a with 000 b with 001 and c with 010 so on so forth for all other other values once this transition table is there then we have to uh, we have to draw a k map or we can write the boolean expression in other way also for f1 plus in terms of f1 f2 f3 and x similarly for f2 plus we have to find out the expression and for f3 plus also we have to find the expression this would be the next state expressions for all the three flip flops and um, even though if it is a d flip flop then the the method would be straightforward um, but if it is JK flip flop or RS flip flop or T flip flop, then we have to uh, map those equations according to uh, the flip flop which is present with us. Now, after finding the next state equations of all the flip flops, then we also find out the um, Boolean expression for my output Z. So, which for example, in this case, Z is one only in this case. So that means uh, when F1, F2 and F3 f1 uh, so i can write it like f1 f2 f3 bar and x that would be the expression of output 
so um, now one question here that which value should be mapped so when we are saying that a b c d are given some value so uh, a could have been given 0 0 0 as well as 0 0 1 so similarly all these seven um, combinations there 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 is a good amount of possibility good possibility that uh, the um, the total possibility of what could be unique combinations where these this uh, these three bits could be assigned to A, B, C, D, um, E, H and L would be of the order of let us say uh, here 8 factorial. So the number is huge. So and the, the problem is also important. Then you, your question could be that uh, why this problem is important. So we, we are summarizing here that if we have n number of states the minimum number of bits required would be log to n. But the encoding possibility that which which encoding should be given to which particular state is exponentially large. So we can see in this case uh, if there are seven states and uh, there are three three bits which are present, the total number of possibilities that what should be given to A and B and C. So it would be of the order of uh, seven factorial. Actually, it's it's more than that eight eight factorial. So um, yeah. So uh, this 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 number is huge. Which of uh, the two questions now? Which state encoding should be given to which particular state? The second question is also important, but uh, th that why this encoding would be important. So you see, if uh, you see one of the previous lectures, we have taken an example by showing that if we take a different encoding, then the uh, number of gates which we choose or where um, we find the next state equations as well as the output functions, it would vary. So uh, what could be a good approach? So um, ideally it is difficult to find out what is the best encoding. It is going to take um, a huge amount of computation because number of possibilities are huge. So what we do is we, we try to find uh, try to follow certain guidelines which can help. These guidelines suggest that uh, if um, so if the transitions is same. So for example, if we are in uh, the, the next state for a given input is same. <coughs> so let us say two states A and B have the same next state C if the input is 1 then A and B both could be given adjacent assignment. When we say adjacent assignment, it is in terms of gray code that the number of bit difference is supposed to be 1. Similarly, if the states uh, which are the next state for the same state. So for example, uh, A's next state is B and C's next state is also B, then also uh, A and B should be given adjacent assignment. Now uh, this this would help us to reduce the uh, equations or reduce the uh, binary boolean expression for next state next state calculation. Similarly, if we would like to reduce the output expression, then we have to say that if the states has same output, then they should be given adjacent assignments. So that would help us in reducing the the expression of the uh, output. Yes, uh, one thing which is also important to say here that it is um, we would like to reduce, but it it is a known I'd say it's a uh, it's a hard problem to solve, computationally hard problem to solve. So we can always approximate. There is no optimal solution. Optimal solution would would requires um, much higher computation. So we'll go with some guidelines and some approximation, um, and uh, we'll find out the solution. One of the other uh, solution which could give a trade off. So let us say if we try to increase the number of bits which can be given, then the solution is always going to be simple. So for example, um, if we uh, use n bits for n states, we call it one hot encoding. So then one bit would be given to each state. You can if you want to try experimenting it, you can do it yourself that if you do this one hot encoding the uh, expression for next state as well as the expression for output is always going to be very very simple. So um, further in uh, case of um, FPGAs 
or CPLDs where uh, each state is stored in a different flip flop and we have number of flip flops which are available so one hot encoding is is quite popular because flip flops are cheap there so each each LUT has at least one flip flop so um, that's why one hot encoding is is quite uh, prominent when we are implementing our circuits using FPGA so let's say S1, S2, S3, S4 are four states then encoding would be um, we'll use four bits and one of the bit would be one for each of the state rest of the time rest of the, uh, the bits would be zero so this is how we can use one hot encoding to um, to reduce the total number of um, expression and reduce the size so we have now two extremes one is reducing the number of flip flop the other this one hot encoding would reduce the area as well as um, delay thank you very much so with this i would uh, like to close today's lecture and um, in summary what we have done in today's lecture is um, we have seen that how a state machine could be reduced how the states could be reduced and uh, if we can we have seen two methods of reduction of state machines one method was completely a visual approach where we were saying if two rows are equivalent then we were two rows are same then uh, two rows of a state table is same then the two states are same uh, the other approach uh, was little convoluted where we have implied that two states are same because uh, they are not different. If they are different then um, they cannot be same. So using this converse uh, formula we have seen that uh, if uh, we can find out if two states are equivalent or not. So with this I would like to close. Um, thank you very much. Thank you.